Hello and welcome to a new video about IT systems. This time we are going to talk about radio frequency IT. Radio frequency IT is another method of checking the identification of something contactless, so without touching. Yeah? Radio frequency IT systems do usually, and here I have an example, consist of a receiver yeah, and so-called transponders. In this case, it looks like a chip or also quite common, looks like credit card, debit card. Okay. So, how is this working? Usually, yeah, usually there is contact. Whenever a transponder is getting close to the reader, it will announce itself to the reader. So there are an electromagnetic communication between those two, radio communication, on different frequencies. So usual frequency is, is low frequency. There are low frequency tags and, and transponders. Then there are high frequency tags and transponders, there are ultra high frequency tags and transponders, and there are microwaves. Okay? Those low frequency stuff, yeah, they have a range of around 0 0.5 meters. High frequency also 0 0.5 meters. Ultra high frequency, we are in 3 to 6 meters, and microwaves, we are up to 10 meters. So this here is usually for traffic systems or something like this. Yeah. So this is for logistics often used. Logistics, containers and so on. This is for traffic. Yeah. For paying the fee, for instance. Yeah. This is for access control, pretty much like this. Yeah. And this here is often used for animal marking. There might be active or passive transmitters. And these here, I would have shown, they are passive. They do get the power supply from the electromagnetic field issued by the receiver. So this is issuing a alternating electromagnetic field, which will induct here enough electricity, enough power, to power up the chip inside. Yeah? Passive. Yeah? There are also active transponder types, which do contain a battery, and actively sending. Okay? The passive ones need to be activated by the reading element, and the active ones are sending actively. Yeah? Usually, these microwave things they are active, yeah? and those are passive. Okay. So, how is such transponder now looking like? Okay. Usually, we had to have somewhere inside this 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 carter is somewhere a chip. Yeah? This is rather small, can be one millimeter, yeah? rather small. Yeah? So this is this is semiconductor chick. Chick. <laughs> semiconductor chip. Silicium. Yeah? With some logic inside doing what it's memory or whatever. Yeah? Like on a standard IC. Yeah? Pretty much like this somewhere in here. Yeah? And then outside we do have the antenna. Yeah? There is somewhere, somewhere like this. Yeah? And usually there's a spool, it might be flat and printed. Yeah? Acting. As an antenna. Yeah? Basically, how far we can get away 
from the reader is basically a feature of the antenna. Yeah? With uh, active ones, it's no issue. With passive ones, the smaller the antenna is, yeah? the closer I need to get. Clear. Yeah? And the bigger the antenna is, the far away I am. So there are antennas small like this or small like this. Yeah? And there might be antennas which use half a meter, something like this. Then I can read it, container stuff and so on. These are usually pretty big antennas. Yeah? So what are usual frequencies? Yeah. Yeah. One thing before, that's it. That's it. The rest of this, the casing and so on, is just to protect those stuff, yeah? that it is not disturbed. Yeah? With nowadays technology, we can even mark paper, money, something like this, cash. It's small enough. Yeah? Small and durable enough. Yeah? These things you've probably seen, these things you probably have in your pocket, yeah? in your wallet, because these contactless uh, pay, paying systems and so on, they usually work that way. What frequency? What frequencies do we have? Well, the first ones were uh, these 125 kilohertz uh, elements. Uh, they are mainly used for, for animal marking and so on. Uh, low frequency stuff. Uh, they are in different, different form factors simply. Yeah? So for animal markets there, there are chips on the ear, there are things which uh, are swallowed yeah, or operated in, chipped cat, chipped dog and so on. We know those. Yeah? And then there is the MIFR system, which is actually this one. Yeah? This is working at 13.56 megahertz. This is HF. Hmm. Stuff. Hmm. This is working in this in this band. Hmm. There are even there are even transponders which can be directly inserted into metal. Hmm. However, yeah, so there are for instance uh, heads, yeah, hexagon screw heads. Looking like this, hexagon screw, I guess you know, yeah? and in there, there's a transponder inserted. Yeah? However, you know, this metal around there, this is damping the field pretty, pretty much. Yeah? So the field, you really have to get close with your reader to read this out. Yeah? This here, like I said, this is this MyFair system, MyFair. We will have a closer look into this because we have it in our Arduino set. Okay, how this is working, how we can program this. So, yeah, like I said, there are also things in in the head of of, of nuts or whatever. Yeah. Uh, however, if there is metal around, you really have to get close with your reading element because this metal is damping the electromagnetic field. Okay. There is one big issue also. Uh, you know, uh, if you're having a whole packet full of elements, yeah? so you're not having one element in there, yeah? you're having more elements in there, and you're bringing one than more element inside, uh, inside the reading area of your, of your reader. Yeah? So there's not one transponder, there are many transponders inside. Yeah? So there is then also the technology of uh, separating them, okay? Singulation, it's called. It's bulk handling. There are standards dealing with this. However, you know, those standards, they are not uh, that well implemented up to now. 
there are a bunch of, of proprietary uh, solutions and so on. Because, you know, you have to be sure that not all transponders are reporting at the same time. And if a transponder has already reported, yeah, it shall not report again unless it leaves the, it leaves the reading field and, and getting into the reading field again. Or unless it is specifically talked to. Yeah. So the, the transponders need to have some special, special uh, features inside. Not just, hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. So, okay, I've noticed. Yeah. And not all at the same time, of course. It's clear. Yeah. So there needs to be some logic inside, which prevents this overlapping communication of the bulk. Yeah. Up to now, separation, physical separation of the units is working better than this bulk handling, this logic bulk handling. Yeah. But it will get better in the future, I am sure about this, yeah. because this is simply a topic. You know, it would be nice if you just unload the truck, yeah, use, you don't have to unbox, yeah, just drive through the gate and it says, okay, you have 1325 new sheets of whatever. Yeah. Would be nice. Yeah. So they are hardly, hardly, they are <laughs> really working on it. Now, this was a false friend. Yeah. I'm working hardly means I'm working almost nothing. Yeah. And I'm working hard, of course. They're working hard on that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, anti-collision handling and so on. This is actually how RFID is working. Have somewhere a transponder, uh, the transponder sending its information until asked. Yeah? It's asked by a reading field of a reading element. Yeah? If it's a passive transponder, it needs to be powered also by the reading field. If it's an active transponder, it has already powered up. Active transponders are usually bigger. Smaller transponders can be used in, in chips, in cards, under the skin, and so on. Yeah. With different frequencies. Low frequency simply to prevent damage to the tissue. Okay. Higher the higher the frequency, the more damage you do to the tissue. Yeah. So this is for animal marking here. Yeah, so we will deal with this MIFER system we do have in our Arduino kit and we try to use this yeah, as an access control. But this uh, will then be in the next few videos. Yeah. Before we are going to talk about, now we have the principal function. Yeah. Next time we are going to talk about what are the benchmarks uh, of the different systems. Yeah? But where I have a look to, to find the correct RFID for my application. Yeah? This should give a little bit overview about the, the function. Next time we are talking about yeah, this and that. Yeah? You can distinguish. This will then be next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.